Hello, everybody, and welcome to the March 18th episode of Trips and Traps. Only one episode this week. I'm Andy Serling, and happy to be joined by the new dad, Eric Donovan. Thank you very much. Glad to be back. Yeah, we missed you last week, or I missed you last week. I imagine everybody watching probably missed you last week, and if I got sick of hearing myself talk for eight and a half minutes, everybody else probably did too. Yeah, I'm sure it was just fine. At least you had some uh, quality insight to uh, bring to, the, bring <laughs> we'll to all the uh, racing fans. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how quality it is <laughs> as time goes on. Probably some of those horses will be showing up pretty soon. But we have three weeks, three races actually from last week. In fact, two of the horses that we're doing are going to be Scott Schwartz trained horses. And we'll start out with one of them. And it's the eight horse Judge William breaking from the outside. And yeah, this was the uh, eighth race on uh, Thursday, a starter allowance. And Judge William, a horse has run some big figures over the inner track uh, all winter long. And we see where he is now outside. And you know, this is a horse that likes to come from off the pace. He's kind of ridden a little bit early on to be up near the pace. But uh, as we're going to see how things play out, it didn't turn out to be the right move. No, it really didn't. And when you have the eight post, either you have the speed to get over a little bit, or you have to try to get back. And the way the eventual winner, jo um, Joe Corgan, settled back, I would have thought that Judge William could have just settled outside of him and been back where he was, and the dynamics would have worked out well for him. Well, chasing in the second tier, three wide around the track, is a way you're almost never going to be able to win a race, especially on the inner going long. Absolutely. It is a fair pace up front, and being up close to this pace, uh, chasing three wide is just not going to do you any favors coming down the stretch and uh, really the uh, horse that's uh, the other horses that were uh, kind of betting here the three horse are all in no outs the favorite here also I think kind of compromised by the position maybe in terms of just being up a little bit too close to this pace I, I agree at least he's too wide and maybe he's a little more comfortable but he's another horse that doesn't seem to be particularly happy being between right. horses here and Judge Williams of course chasing here on the outside and as we'll see as they head to the turn right now Judge Williams is really the first one who's being asked to move and you can see CeCe Lopez is now asking Judge William. I, I'm sorry, this is not the way Judge William wants to be ridden particularly, and this is not a trip conducive to winning. Now, you're right about all and no outs, but if the race had developed in front of him, maybe could have gotten out. Of course, the winner, Joe Corrigan, just blows by the field. Yeah, absolutely, and there was a certain, certainly a pace collapse in here with Masala T and the Northern Buster setting the pace at uh, long shot odds here and, uh, and, and falling apart in the stretch and uh, being, I think, last and, and third to last year, but we see Joe Corrigan opening up here, and Judge William really not much left for the stretch, as you could imagine and having that uh, three wide chasing uh, position throughout. I agree, but you know, all in no outs should have easily beaten him for second. I thought all in, in no outs. I mean, you see, he barely gets second over Judge William here. Is that a credit to Judge William? A little bit, but it's also a knock on all in no outs, who I thought had no finish here because even though he's between horses, he angles out in the stretch. He's supposed to put in some kind of run. He came cl nowhere close to that breakout performance the time before that. Judge William's a horse that I think has a slightly buried form a little bit. Mm -hmm. He had good form. Now, maybe he's tailing off. Off, but I don't know if he'll get another start in the inner. I don't. I think he could be suited to, to the main track when we get to it, which I actually just watched them working on it, and maybe yeah. we get him in the right spot. One turn mile, maybe for him on the main track. You look two turns. I, I'd be happy with one turn mile. We don't run that many two turn races, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him show up in a one turn mile race, and maybe he can settle more because the main track does open two weeks from today on April first. Hard to believe it's been a long stand on the inner <laughs> track, but uh, we'll be very happy to go uh, on to the main. Let's get to our uh, second race here. We're going to take a look at the uh, Herald Square and this was uh, Saturday's sixth race here, Herald Square's number two. Yeah, and Herald Square is a horse we had done before, and it worked out well for us. And once again, Herald Square breaks a little bit slowly here. And it's really, Jeffrey Sanchez is riding him. He's really got to get these horses out of the gate quickly. And as you'll see, Herald Square is a horse with some speed. And because of the slow break and the way the field goes up, he all of a sudden finds himself five, six lengths behind, which turns out to be a very tepid pace. And the race is won wire to wire by Green Spirit. And there's Herald Square, two and a half, three wide in the turn, way out of position, already a good five lengths behind the leader, and he's just out no man's land here. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be that far back, you might as well be tucked in along the rail, saving all the ground you can, uh, just for him to be in this spot. After the break, it's just not going to do him any favors here. We see the uh, the uh, seven horse up front, Green Spirit, getting away with pretty comfortable fractions here, controlling the pace, and there's not going to be a meltdown here. Yeah, and you know, when Harold Square that bad break when we showed him a few months ago, he stumbled that day. This wasn't a stumble. This was a horse that just broke sluggishly, almost a length slow. And he really needs to get an attentive ride out of the gate. And at this point, Harold Square is out and back and way back in the field in a race where the speed, as we said, never collapsed. And he ends up making this four or five wide move. And he's just sort of flailing around behind the pack. And for my money, as you'll see as they go around the turn, I mean, how is he possibly going to win this race? Making 
a move at the half mile pole, four or five wide on the inner, behind a horse that's just cruising along on the lead that wires the field easily. Frankly, you see the horse being asked very hard here. You would think at this point in the race, he is going to finish a distant last. I certainly did, as he sort of goes out in the five or six path. And what's surprising to me about this race is he never really gives up. He actually, and he's left the picture here, he will actually end up finishing fourth in this race, beating about seven lengths. And he beats three horses, too. Really a remarkable performance for him. I mean, you would say he has no chance to be anywhere involved. He's not really involved for the top spot here, but as you said, he's only beaten seven lengths. He did beat three horses in here with the trip from the poor start to losing a little ground on the first turn and making that ridiculous move on the second turn. Really uh, absolutely no favors for a Herald Square here, and I look forward to uh, seeing him move forward next time out. Yeah, I do. I am looking forward to him. Now, I know he's done his better running on some wet tracks, but I'm not convinced that he can't run a little dry track. And this race was off a little bit of a freshening. I am really looking forward to Herald Square coming back. Now, the next horse we're going to show, I'm not sure how much we want to bet him in the future <laughs> or not. It just seemed a little bit strange. And we're going to show Sunday's featured race. And this involves, of course, more chances wins the race. But number three, B. Bullish, who a lot of us thought could be the speed here. And here he goes to the front early with Chucky Lopez. He's number three, the gray. But it didn't seem like he was getting an overly aggressive ride to the lead. Yeah, he doesn't, and uh, it's not the typical kind of Chucky Lopez ride because we, we all know we, Chucky loves to go to the front end here, and for him to abdicate to the favorite on the outside is just not usually the way he rides, and because he's not aggressive here, he's going to give up his position, he's going to get shut off as he goes into the turn, and it's really going to you know, really put him in a dicey spot in here, and I think if he had it to do over, we're going to see uh, right here he's going to have to, uh, he's going to steady a little bit, he's worried about the other horse maybe coming in on him as they move into the turn here, but uh, if he had to do over, I think he would send this horse hard from the gate. I agree. I mean, this is something, look, Chucky understands how to ride speed horses as well as anybody in New York. I mean, this is what his reputation is. And the one thing you don't want to do, as you're saying, is get caught in the position that people has got caught, where you're sort of tepidly being going, not going, and somebody tightens things up, and you get caught in a jackpot on the inside. At this point, B. Bullish is on the inside. I'm not sure he's particularly happy being on the inside. Maybe he either wants to be clear or be outside of horses, and he does absolutely no running whatsoever. But I'm telling you, either B. Bullish's good, good performances are over and he just can't really run anymore, which I suppose is a possibility. He has, run, a lot he has run and he was running well and he hasn't run as well, but I think he's had two straight trips that just have given him absolutely no chance to win the race. And we're going to take a look at the head on when they come from the gate. And this is what we mean about it just doesn't seem like he's you know being hustled as much. Now he breaks a little bit, you know, the ground breaks a little below him, but he as you saw on the pan shot, he sort of had the lead, but you know, Chucky's sort of asking him, but it doesn't feel like this horse is being overly ridden to the lead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen Chucky Lopez ride enough around here to, to know when he's sending a horse, he wants to get the lead. He's going to get the lead in a situation like this. And as you see, the, the fact that he was a little tentatively ridden there, and then you see the rider on more chances looking over to see where B. Bullish was. And, you know, I guess he thinks he's clear here, comes over, and then B. Bullish is kind of shut off as they go into the turn here a little bit, nowhere to run, and he's got to lose his position there. And that just cost B. Bullish dearly. Yeah, it really did. And that's a very tough spot for riders to be inside. And you can understand, because that's when you can get yourself shut off, but the reality was be bullish if he had been going forward with him early, he wouldn't have been in that same position. And more chances is not a speed horse. I mean, he's been in front these last two races because nobody else wanted to lead. And Richard Migliori was smart enough to take advantage of that. And he was also a big favorite and just the best horse. But he's a horse more comfortable rating. And I don't think that Richie was looking to send this horse. And be bullish had the opportunity. It wasn't taken advantage of. I I'm looking forward to getting one more chance with him. I, I know he feels like we're chasing him a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think he's had a fair chance in two straight races. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him get a little time between starts too because he has had a, a tough winter campaign but uh, certainly a race comes up with a lack of pace on paper you would hope next time he's sent hard for the lead and makes the lead and goes wire to wire. Yeah or maybe he gets in a seven front to a mile race I'm not sure what conditions he has left where he can sit outside another speed but anyway that does it for this week's show we appreciate your watching and always want to remind you the email address trips and traps at nairainc.com. Send your thoughts in. Send us some races to show. Try to get them in early. But anything you have to say, we'd love to hear from you, and we'll try to respond. In fact, we will.